hi there welcome back to our channel in today's video we are going to show you the construction processes the cost of material and the cost of labor for the construction of this five bedroom spacious duplex from foundation to the dpc level in today's market price april 2024 Confirm stay tuned with us as we give you the details of the process and the cost in the video. So, there are so many ways of setting out a building. But for us at Umec Real Estate Construction Services Limited, our first point of call is to get the setback from all the property okay. um, lines. After which, you get? we then um, you square, that? pinpoint the starting point and then square the building. Once we've squared the building, giving allowance for the profile board, then we now put our profile and start um, yes, yes. putting the, the, the internal partitions. The so here, this is what the process we are undertaking here. At this point here, now we've gotten all the four corners of the building all squared. And it is now left for us to um, put in the profile board, which the guys are doing. Now you can see that we used lines to get all the four corners and ensure that it is perfectly squared. Then from there, the profile board uh, work started. Now it's on this profile board, which is this two by two we are putting on the board, and now all the external and internal walls of the building are marked out using um, two inches and three inches nails. Recall that as we're squaring the building, we had to add extras. For instance, if the building is um, 12 meters, we will give an allowance of um, up to 3 feet. That's 900 uh, by the right hand side and also by the left hand side, which is uh, supposed to be the profile space. So that we have some space from the profile before the foundation starts. So this is what we did to get or the four corners of the uh, walls, the four corners of the building, uh, so that after the profile goes around, we can then start putting everything and work starts immediately. That's in bend, in bend. Now, the profile board has gone round the space we want to use for the building. The next thing is for us to now um, use the nails, three inches for the foundation space and two inches for the walls. So here we're going to map out the foundation spaces and the walls such that um, the excavation can commence. As soon as the marking of both the internal and external partitions has been completed, the next phase of the work is to tie the lines across all the matching nails and then follow the lines to pour sand, making an impression on the floor uh, on how the foundation is going to go. 
to this line. So this helps the, the excavators to know exactly where to dig, where each line stopped and where each one continued. So this pouring of sand to mark the foundation spaces concludes the setting out phase of the project and um, leads to the excavation. So it's, as soon as this is concluded, the excavation of the project starts. As can be seen in this video, the excavation for this project was done manually and of course um, the payment was per partition and um, for my measurement the partition of course um, for knowledge purposes the partition is 3.6 meters and that is how the charge for the excavation of this project was done. So once the main excavation of the uh, foundation footings had been completed, the next thing is to uh, mark and excavate the column bases, which is what we have done here. And as soon as that is concluded, then um, the blinding of the foundation of the, um, the column bases, as well as the mounting of the columns begins. So the mounting of the columns is done by tying a rope on the um, the matching nails for the walls. Then when that is done, then um, you use a plumb level and of course ensure that it is a plumb standing on the line on both sides. So you tie the rope for each column, both sides, and then place it in between ensuring that it is on the perfect place it's supposed to be before the block work starts one of the activities that is also very vital is the pegging of the foundation which helps to determine the level of the casting at every part of the foundation so for instance if you want to use um 
six inches which is like 150 millimeters so you start from a point get that uh, six inches and then plumb it you see that as you are going it will either decrease or increase because when you plumb it of course the excavators didn't use plumb so their hands will not be perfect but if you plumb the foundation like that if you peg it you will see that some places will be higher some places, but by the end of the day the top will be plumb such that when you place your blocks everything will rhyme the top will rhyme by the end of the day and when all these had been done and the mounting of the columns completed then the casting of the main foundation footings begins After casting the foundation footings, the next thing is now to lay the blocks from inside the foundation. Now, this is also taking a clue from the, um, the profile boards. And this actually is the last work the profile board does. Because at this point, um, you take a clue, you, you put your lines on the, on the walls, on the wall, uh, the wall markings from the profile board then plumb it down and from there put the block walls and this should follow um, matching lines and by the end of the day you've marked out all the lines all the walls as they are marked on the peg on the profile and this marks the end of the, the work of the profile board after which you can then remove it and then fire down the work to the dpc level Now, upon reaching the DPC level, which is determined by taking a clue from the height of the road, now the next thing is for the carpenter to board all the columns from a foundation. Then we cast it. After the casting of these columns, then the filling of the building space to the DPC level commences. It is also worthy of note that at places where the block is higher than five courses, we in most cases chain the, uh, with the last block, um, that is uh, casting a beam on top of the last block to ensure that it has a kind of binding force that pulls the um, foundation together during the filling so that it will not crack, for, uh, as you can see here.
the time the filling of the foundation space to the DPC level had been completed, the next thing is to water the uh, sand, then use a compacting machine to rama it and ensure that the sand is well compacted. Then after which the casting of the DPC is done. And uh, during the compacting, you also notice that as you compact most of the places, the sand goes below what is required. And you also need some boys to bring in some sand with the wheelbarrow and of course stuff those places as you compact. So that is how the work is done until you've achieved a relatively um, table, table surface to receive the concrete for the DPC. So by the time the casting of the DPC was done, this, the materials we used were as follows. One bag of two inches nails, of course, which remained we used uh, in other works. Three inches nail, one bag, um, five bundles of pegs, 30 pieces of two by two profile board, 10 ropes, five shovels and five hard pans, 120 bags of cement, five trips of sand then we got th um, 50 tons of chippings that was 25 25 into two places um 30 lengths of 16 mm roads 60 lengths of 12 mm roads 20 lengths of 8 mm roads one roll of binding wire then for the block we used the 2000 pieces of uh, nine inches blocks the filling sand we brought was 15 trips. Then this, uh, we used uh, some local stone for the casting of DPC. Then of course, um, the board used was 80 pieces. In all, the total cost of the material used to bring this project from foundation to DPC was 5,099,000 Naira. While the total cost of labor was 1,600,000. That is to say that in today's Nigeria, to bring this particular project from foundation to DPC will cost between 6.5 million to 7 million naira thank you for being with us this far and see you in our next one